think now I would like to welcome you into another Unity at Harps for virtual service. Today we're going to be finishing up Eye of the Storm and we're going to be looking at a little different perspective than even the book. So stay tuned. I think you'll find some practical tools that you can use to stay centered in your everyday. For remaining silent when a single voice would have made a difference.
for the selfishness that set us apart and alone. that the work that the board and I and Reverend Joy 
and we facilitated this process. And those in the community that wanted to be part of setting the new vision, mission, and uh, core values, we have finished that process last Monday. And what I'm going to do every Sunday is take a different one of the core values, and once we're all back together, we can make this something that we do together. Because it's only through repetition does it become real, otherwise it's just a bunch of words put on a shelf and forgotten. So the vision that we're looking at, the new unity of Harrisburg, is we envision a world awakened to its oneness, thriving with all in harmony. I love the vision. I love this mission, living the truth that we teach, we lead, we serve, and we build community. And you're going to see this now for all of our core values. The core, the value statements are completed. And the first one is love. To see the divine everywhere. To listen with the heart. To speak clarity with compassion. To act with kindness and to leave no one out is to be loved in this world. I love the work that was done here. I mean, it's not only, to me, poetic, but it's highly positive and spiritual. I don't know about you, but this is a place I want to go to. I want to be a member of, be part of. And so I'm so excited about this vision and this mission and the core values. That, and the board is going to be taking this very seriously because this is how we're going to manage this community. Every decision, every dollar being spent, does it meet our vision, our mission, and our core values? And if the answer is yes, then we continue. If not, we need to step back and reevaluate. And we learned a very powerful process in this in collaboration is when you don't agree, then it's your job to make, say what would get it to attend. And we watched this work over me many meetings and it was just fantastic to watch the process. So I'm excited about where we're headed here. Also, starting next week, Maybe my most favorite sacred text in the world is the Tao Te Ching. And you're going to see today why we're going to be moving into this. But what I love about this, you know, I've, I've often said I'm the Cliff Notes kind of guy, Kiss kind of guy, keep it simple and spiritual. I love Lao Tzu. Now, we don't know if it was actually a man or it was a group of sages or mystics or whatever, but I don't even, I don't care about that. I care about the message. The metaphysical and the mystical teachings here. In 81 verses, one of the major religions in the world were founded. I mean, when you can get it down to 81 verses, you kind of have the essence of the truth, I think. And so we're going to dive into this. I'm going to attempt something I've never done, is to teach five of these verses in one Sunday, starting next Sunday. So any of you have Tao Te Ching, it's verse 1 through 5. And we're going to see how that goes through a couple of Sundays. I'm not sure that some of these verses are so deep. I'm not sure we can get through five. If not, then we'll modify and go on. But I'm looking forward to that starts next Sunday. Today, we're finishing up Eye of the Storm, chapters 10 and 11. This is my third time through this book. And what's so interesting, and I, I went back to when I first read it, it was maybe 10 years ago. And then I had to read it again in ministerial school and then this time. And I'm so amazed at how much deeper and higher the learning was for me the third time through. But it makes sense, I hope, for any of us. When we go back and restudy and reread something that we did in the past, I hope it's new for you, or then you're not growing. You're not at a different place in consciousness unless it does for you. If it's the same old, same old, you got to look in the mirror and say, what happened in this last five years? And this was another example of that. There was so much powerful things that came through, especially in the Tuesday night class, as we really worked through. And what I love what Spirit's done here is we, you may have noticed, we're like building blocks on a way to a higher and deeper life. The five agreements help us with all the things that we're dealing with internally. This was about how do we deal with people and stuff on the outside. And now we're moving into Tao Te Ching, which is all about another level. So when you put those three together, you have very practical teachings on how to live a higher, more spiritual, 
more enlightened life. So I love how this has all come together. I wish I could take credit for it, I can't. It, it just happened. And it wasn't a plan of mine. I wish, I wish I was that smart, but I wasn't. Conflict, interference of patterns. We've been talking about these patterns of energies. What happens when something comes in and triggers us? There's this patterns going on inside. Emotions, energy and emotion, right? We're feeling it, we're triggered. What do we do about it? This book, this study has been about making friends with conflict. Through Tuesday night class, we've had people still saying, I have an issue with this. Making friends with it just didn't feel right. It doesn't sit right. It's because we've been so domesticated of how to deal with conflict in a different way. To take it head on or to take revenge or defend and all those things. This is also a study about finding our wholeness and our worth, no matter what is going on around us. Circumference stuff. Circumference stuff, as we talked about through this whole book, it's the ego, it's the engagement in someone else's stuff. You know, most of our, those who know really how to trigger us the best are those closest to us, and us then. We've had a dance been going on for a long time. And we, our egos know how to trigger them and how to defend and we do this and, and it's all, this entanglement is not a peace, but it's also not coming out of wholeness and it's not coming out of our worthiness. And that was another piece that was very important in this. So as we began to look at making friends with conflict, we matched up these four major conflicts with the ways we can change. I won't go into depth here, we spent a lot of time on going from separateness to communion. What does communion mean? It means a common union. It means staying engaged, it's being in touch, connecting in the energy with someone. Misperception, most of those come from our assumptions, number one, and our taking it personal. Back to the five agreements, and that shows up then in our conflicts with other people. Competition, we go to purpose, and finally, defensiveness to non-resistance. This whole notion of non-resistance is the least taught in the Western world. It's the least taught in the spiritual center. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that because that takes us to the next step. So our primary responses to conflict were before we even started this process was either we fight, we flight, or we freeze. And each one of us have a primary response. This is the response we were taught. We were domesticated that this is the way to stay what? Safe and secure. And we either run or we fight or we freeze. This process that we've talked about is learning to become friends with. Today I want to take it one step further. And that's to go into flow. This is a notion of a, a word, an idea that has come out of the East. As we move into Tao Te Ching in the next couple of weeks, the Tao Te Ching, many people say, it's the process of becoming like water. It's the water showing of the way water works. Water doesn't resist, but water wears down. It's the most powerful because it stays in the flow, it goes in the flow, and we're gonna talk about how to be able to do that more in our lives. If you don't believe water is more powerful than rocks, I have a, idea for you, why don't you Google the Grand Canyon and see who won. Over millions of millions of years, the Colorado River won. It's more powerful than a rock because it learns how to flow and not get stuck and move. And we're going to learn how to do that in our lives. So the Master Teacher Jesus said this, and this is again one of the teachings that we like to forget. You know, in our Chinese menu, we pick from A and B and not choose the ones that bother us. We were not taught how to resist not. And he used the word evil here, I'm gonna use the word for negative. Resist not. Negativity, resist not fear and worry and anxiety, anger, sadness, verbal attacks, or others trying to control us. Our domestication is to resist all of these. Now, I'm not going to stand here and be Pollyanna enough today to say there are not times when you need to fight for your rights. There are. And you are legitimate in doing that. 
if the tax continue or what it might be. But this is a way, this is more of a, a way of life. It's a, I, you know what, I just aren't going to get entangled in their stuff anymore. It's their stuff. And they've been doing this forever and they're not going to change. And we pull back like the water in the river and flow around the rock. It's a state of mind. It's a concept that we can build a much higher and more peaceful consciousness in the way we do our lives. I changed his words a little bit and said, resist not life. Because life comes, right? And life on any day can bring stuff we weren't ready for. And if you don't resist it and you take a breath and get centered and go to the flow, you have a much better chance of keeping your peace and maintaining that peace as you go through the day. Centered, I'm going to call it now, in the flow. We're taking it one step beyond being friends. We want to actually be in the flow. And you're going to see this through the Tao Te Ching over and over again. There's instructions on how we can stay in the flow. As we become more conscious of the universal principle, the universal principle that we studied in this book is there is no one and no thing against us. We were not taught that. We were taught we had to compete. There was lack. We were not taught that there's incredible universal abundance and that if we stay in the flow, it all comes to us. You know, the master teacher said it this way. The father said, it's my greatest pleasure to give you it all. And we're like, no, no, I only need this much. I'm only worthy of this much. That is not in the flow. That is constricting the flow through limit and lack. So as we begin to open up to the principles, we can settle into the flow of life. And there's a natural process in the flow. And as we become more aware of it, we get more connected. We also learn that as we go to the consciousness of our purpose, and he made a very great statement in this book, which I believe is true, is that the master teacher Jesus' main purpose was to learn to become the Christ. And he's saying that's the main purpose for you and I. We came to the planet of Earth, this schoolhouse of living, to learn how to become the Christ. That's a bold, radical statement for most people, but I believe it's exactly what the master teacher taught 2,000 years ago and has been convoluted in the teaching to take us away from that because that makes us so much powerful that we're direct from the divine and becoming the Christ within ourselves and the Christ consciousness. God living through us becomes our power source, not our powerless ego. And until we make that conscious decision that we want to live from that, we will continue to do habitually what we've always done and live from that powerless side of the ego. Everything has a center. Every flower, every tree, every animal, and every human being. But we haven't been trained well how to go to center. And the center is where the balance and the equilibrium are present. When you look at a great big wheel and the circumference is going around and speeding around, it's out here, there's all kinds of speed. What's happening at center? Balance, equal, and harmony. And that's what this whole book was about, learning to do this. So this is your center of gravity. Most of us have never learned this. Um, I love that I get to teach martial arts now in church. That's pretty cool. So where's your center of gravity? Your center of gravity is, as you can see in the picture, it's right above your hip bones. Another way to measure it, it's about a three-finger width below your navel, about an inch and a half. Once you find that spot, I'm going to have you practice it with me today, because what good is it to do to talk about it if you don't feel it and experience it? And then you go inside, and it sits behind the stomach and in front of the spine. That's your absolute center of gravity. Now, in martial arts, you learn how to do that, because when I center, you can't move me. No one can move me. If I'm not centered, you can knock me over easily. But all of you here, if we weren't socially distanced, I would do a practice and show you how you can, when you go to center and breathe from there, I can't move you no matter how big I am and you're not as big as I am or strong. 
Because when we get centered, we get locked into the energy of the earth and the gravity, and it centers us. And we're powerful. And we become a rock. And we're going to learn how to do that in just a second. So here's how to do it. Take your left hand on your navel and move down three, three fingers or an inch and a half. Put your right hand over top of that. And I like to make mine like this so it becomes a point because that helps me focus my mind. And at that point, go back in behind the stomach, which is the first thing you're going to run into, and before the spine, that's your natural center. And if you learn to find that, you will learn how to be in the flow. And you will learn how to instantly go to center, no matter what's going on around you. No matter who it is or what they're doing, you come to center. Now I'm going to ask you to imagine with me. Do you remember? Little children get in the kingdom. Not old adults who can't imagine them. I want you to imagine at this spot that you're actually breathing in and out from center. Now I know your lungs are breathing, but I want you to imagine it breathing into the center and breathing out from that because what's actually coming into center is the energy of the breath. And this was a martial arts taught early on is a way to get yourself centered, steady, and like a rock. But you can do this sitting in the car. You can do this standing in line. When every time you get triggered, come to center and breathe. Follow your breath in and out. And usually it only takes three breaths. And you're going to find yourself going, And then you become the Buddha. You get a little Buddha smile. And you let them get all the way down. And it really, really ticks them off when you don't get engaged anymore. But you can use this anytime, anywhere. Anytime you're feeling out there, disconnected, discombobulated, come back to center. Because here's what happens when you do. Breathing from center will put you in the flow of life. The, the Tao, the flow, the chi, the energy, the life energy. And when we go there, it allows everything to get centered. And what happens is all the monkey mind, whirly bird stuff going up in your head starts to settle. And if you don't feel it in three breaths, keep doing it. Series of three, three, six, nine, twelve. By the time you get to twelve, I guarantee you're centered. And you become back in the flow. And then, when you are, you can do other things. Remember, I've been talking along the last couple of weeks that so many times people say, well, you don't understand. There is no other option. There's always other options. And when we get to flow and we get centered, we begin to open up and we can begin to ask empowering questions of it. And it also takes us away from the defensiveness. Defensiveness is rooted in resistance, right? We resist them, we get defensive. That resistance is triggered by a perceived threat. We are not safe, we are not secure in this relationship, in this experience, and we begin defensive and we begin to push back and the energy is there. Immediately conflict begins and we're out of center. This is your signal to go to center. This is your signal to get in the flow. I call this whole thing down here my emotional GPS. As you become more self-aware and you're recognizing what's going on in your gut, in your emotions in your gut, third chakra up, right? Solar plexus chakra is the seed of emotions, right in the center of the spot. So it's all going on in there. When you feel that, simply breathe to center, get centered and get get in the flow, and it all begins to go away. Non-resistance, what I believe the master teacher Jesus was talking about, is living from center. It's living from the flow. It's not resisting life. It's not resisting other people. Again, in context, I, you know, I recognize you have to protect yourself at some point in the process. When you feel the resistance, take your awareness to center and breathe and you will immediately begin to go in the flow. And from center, you have these options. You can start to ask questions. 
What meaning am I giving this? This person is bringing all this stuff. How can I express my wholeness or my worthiness in this situation? Opens us up to other options. Well, you know, I can step back here. I don't need to get engaged. There's another way for me to do it from wholeness. How would I be today if I was in the flow? This is, I love this question. Because I know when I'm not in the flow. And I love to live in the flow. And when I'm not, I want to ask this question. How would I be if I was? And all of a sudden it's like, well, I would do this and possibly that. You're opening up then to the divine intelligence and wisdom that can flow through you in the flow. So to finish up this book, and you know me, I've got to have practical tools that I use in my spiritual toolbox. And what I did is I created three breaths here to center. Because you're going to see why, and you're going to see all the pieces basically in the book come together in this. So when I feel wigged out and I'm out of the flow, this is what I do. I go to three breaths. I call the number one breath the centering breath. Breathe to center. I am at center. Bring that in to the center. And all of a sudden you begin to go. The second one I call the wholeness breath. I am whole. You can add worthy too if that's important. I try to keep it as few words as I can so I can remember it. So I am centered and I am whole. And the last one I call the peace breath. I am peace. I don't know about you, but if I am centered, if I am whole, and I am peace, that's about as good as it gets in this schoolhouse of learning how to live and learning how to be in the flow no matter what's going on around you. I am centered, I am whole, and I am at peace. He ends the book with this affirmation, which I love. I am a calm center of peace, radiating peace in every way. The world needs you, the world needs me, to be the peace. And we will only see the peace when we be the peace, one by one by one. Grassroots peace will create the consciousness in total of peace finally on this planet after all these thousands and thousands of years. I am a calm center of peace, radiating peace in every way. Let's go to silence. I know it might feel kind of strange, but play with it. What your imagination is that you can really breathe into your center. Let your breath go beyond the stomach into that, that spot before the spine. And just hold it for a minute. Then breathe again, and this time say, I am centered. Feel what that feels like. Affirm your truth. Because you can live from here if you choose. Sometimes when things are going on, I need to do three of those. I breathe in, I am centered. in the harmony with no thought of the circumference no thought anymore of the entanglements of people or places knowing that no one or no thing is against us the universe is conspiring for our success and our happiness and then take another breath and I am whole Another word for whole is holy. We must become whole to become holy. Breathe in, I am whole. Not compartmentalized, not chopped up into all kinds of 
different roles of the mask, but the wholeness of spirit. I am whole. And then finally, breathing in, I am peace. into the world, we have love and peace, then we get joy. Because we're in the flow of the divine. Connected at death. Let's go forward this week and be the peace. Be the peace that we want to see in the world. It starts right here, right now, with you and me. Be the peace. So it is. Please join us in our peace song. of God watches over me. Wherever I am, God is, and wherever God is, all is well. Thank you, God. And thank you for watching today, and if you'd like more information, please sign up for our e-news at unityofharrisburg.org. Have a peaceful week.